We hear over and over again from the media that Trump is the most prolific liar that the presidency has ever seen. And we've been hearing it since almost day one of his presidency when they made a huge deal about his allegedly exaggerated inauguration numbers. Before Trump, everybody called this sort of thing spin or hype, which seems to fit the bill better since Trump is all about the hype. The media knows this, but they label anything that he's spinning or hyping or maybe just gets wrong as a lie. We'll get right back to this media meltdown, but first let me just take a quick moment to thank this video's sponsor, RibT.com. Guys, I know that we all need to constantly replace our t-shirts and underwear because we buy them cheap, in bulk, and at department stores. I'm here today to implore you to consider stepping up to a higher quality, immensely more comfortable choice. Not only are they American made, but RibT is a company that that values free speech and YouTubers like yours truly. If you need new t-shirts and underwear, and I think we all know that you do, treat yourself and try something that will not only feel amazing and improve your mood, but will also outlast anything that you bought from a department store. Head on over to ribtcom forward slash drone tech and make sure that you use the promo code drone tech to get 20% off most items. If you would like me to give your channel or your website a shout out, simply make a purchase at ribtcom forward slash drone tech and send me the proof of purchase. Thank you. People in the media are constantly referencing the Washington Post claim that Trump has allegedly told 12,000 lies since being in office. And if you think that sounds like an absolutely ridiculous number, that's because it is. The so-called fact checker that's leading this inquisition even admitted that they're only doing it because the readers asked for it. This is nothing but a DNC marketing strategy. It was supposed to just be for 100 days. But after the first 100 days, readers kind of begged us to keep going. So we said we'd do it for another year. And then they begged us to keep going for the rest of his presidency. Of course, every president says things that are false or misleading. The strategy here is pretty simple and obvious. They throw out this ridiculously large number because they know that their readers will never do any follow-up and check these alleged lies. They repeat this claim over and over, not just at the Washington Post, but all throughout the Democrat Party media. If you aren't lazy and you do your homework on all of these supposed lies, what you're going to find is that they're all either nitpicking or semantic word games that are spun as lies and then attributed to literally hundreds of statements. For example, when Trump says that there was no Russian collusion, the Washington Post lists that as a lie and then attributes it to hundreds of statements. Or when Trump says that we're building the wall. The Washington Post nitpicks about the funding and when that funding actually came in and then labels that a lie and again attributes it to hundreds of statements. As you can probably guess, this hard-hitting journalistic determination to hold truth to power only extends as far as the opposition to the Democrat Party. The Washington Post and the media at large aren't nearly as interested in fact-checking Democrats using these same standards. In fact, they've rationalized on many occasions not giving Democrats Pinocchios when they get the facts wrong like they recently did with Kamala Harris. During several speeches, she made the incorrect claim that the majority of women are working minimum wage jobs. The Washington Post ran cover for her, stating, quote, Regular readers know that we generally do not award Pinocchios when politicians admit error, and we certainly give an allowance for a slip of the tongue during a live event. We don't play gotcha at the fact checker. Really, because that's precisely how you got to this ridiculous 12,000 lies claim. Obviously, it's a completely different standard for Democrats. The same goes for gaff-prone Joe Biden, who says things that would get a Republican hounded for weeks by the media. I never make any big, big gaffes. I mean, you guys love saying that about me. But often his handsiness and comments no, they see 30. are likened to those of a crazy but lovable uncle. But as they veer toward the more bizarre variety, it's raising questions about appropriate behavior for someone eyeing the White House. So earlier this week, Biden publicly used the term Shylocks in reference to aggressive money lenders. They're going to put you all back in chains. In Delaware, the largest growth in population is Indian Americans moving from India. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. A very identifiable Somali community. There's an awful lot of driving cabs uh, and, uh, and are friends of mine, for real. I'm not, I'm not being solicitous. I our biggest problem is our allies. If there's ever a problem, just walk out on the balcony here or walk out put that double barrel shotgun and fire two blasts outside the house. All this stuff about how different Barack Obama is. They're just not used to somebody really smart. They're just not used to somebody who's really well educated. 
They just don't know quite how to handle it. Because if he's as smart as Barack is, he mustn't be from my... happens to be, as Barack says, a three-letter word, jobs. J-O-B-S, jobs. Unrelenting stream of immigration. Non-stop. Folks like me who were Caucasian of European descent, for the first time in 2017, we'll be in an absolute minority. Fewer than 50% of the people in America, from then and on, will be white European stock. That's not a bad thing. His most recent screw up came during a recounting of a story about a veteran who was awarded a medal and refused it. Joe Biden reportedly mangled every single fact and detail about that moment. But unlike Trump, the media ran to his defense, not calling Joe a liar, but just a great guy who sometimes gets the facts wrong. So-called independent fact checkers like Snopes gave him a mixture rating, justifying it by saying that the core story was true. Yeah, Biden got every single detail wrong, including his role in the story, but we're gonna do damage control for him because he's a Democrat. It's true, while Biden's recounting of the story was completely and utterly wrong, it wasn't really a lie either. The problem is, Snopes, The Washington Post, PolitiFact, or any of the rest of the Democrat media would never give Trump that leeway. CBS News correspondent Cheryl Atkinson, if you don't remember that name, she's the journalist that was spied on by the Obama administration, pointed out the obvious saying, quote, okay, we've got it. When certain people tell a false story, it's not false. It's true because parts are true. If Trump does the same thing, it's a malicious lie. Exactly. This is yet another manifestation of the two-tiered system of standards that the media and the Democrats hold against their political opposition. I'd give Joe a break. Joe's a storyteller. And so I'd, I'd give him a break on this. And, you know, this kind of thing, particularly compared to the right. current incumbent in the White House, uh, should not, you know, be a, a big problem for him. So what is it we're watching here? From where I'm sitting, it looks like Meet the Press is acting as PR for the Biden campaign. This is normally the job of a press secretary, to spin negative news as something positive. A job the media calls lying when done for a Republican administration. Yeah, give Joe a break because it's not as if the media isn't all united in giving Democrats one big break. Trump lies, it's about Google and Google changing votes and making you scared about things. When right. Joe Biden lies, it's about trying to say he's going to be commander in chief and he understands heroism. There you go. More proof that what these people label a lie is highly dependent on partisan politics. She and the rest of the media called Trump's claims that Google manipulated votes a lie even though he was referencing a real study. This study was done by the American Institute for Behavioral Research and Technology, and they said, quote, in 2016, biased search results generated by Google's search algorithm likely impacted undecided voters in a way that gave at least 2.6 million votes to Hillary Clinton, whom this guy supported. Sure, Trump got his numbers mixed up in his tweet about this research, but making a mistake like that does not equate a lie, especially based on the media standards for Democrat lies. Yet another example of this happened recently when PolitiFact ruled a picture of Joe Biden and former Klansman Robert Byrd mostly false. That's right. Right. They rated an indisputable photograph mostly false. They justified this by claiming viral posts about the photograph described Robert Byrd as a grand wizard when he was in fact only a lowly exalted cyclops. Is it just me or does it sound like these guys play a lot of D&D? &D? In my lifetime, the media has always been biased in favor of the left, but since Trump got elected, they seem to be increasingly more extreme in their enforcements of these one-way standards. Don't think for one second that this is ever going to stop. It's going to keep going. They'll continue until they've wiped out all dissent and opposition. Help me continue the fight by subscribing to me on Patreon or Subscribestar. For just $1 a month, you'll get access to an exclusive video every week. You can also send me a donation on PayPal or buy some drone merch on my Teespring store. Either way, I really appreciate it and you're helping to keep this channel going. That's all I got for you today. I'll see you all next video.